Ladies and gentlemen, we have special guests focused on the well-being of uh, children and young adults through the laws of nature. Our guests of the day are Dr. Ellen Tart Johnson and Vanessa Chamberlain. They both will answer my questions regarding the childhood wellness and how to support our children and young adults heal in mind, body, and spirit. Through the laws of nature, please tune in until the end of this uh, program and share, like, uh, subscribe, and comment so we can learn from most of you. Dr. Ellen Tart Jansen and Vanessa Chamberlain, welcome to To Back Press Media. Thank you. Thank you. Would you please tell me a little background about your, yourself, uh, both of you? Dr. Ellen, you may start. Well, um, I am an iridologist and a naturopath and a nutritionist and an herbalist. And I got into this work because I had scoliosis as a child. And I suffered greatly with surgeries for many years and looked and looked for ways to overcome so that I could be a healthy person and be able to help others especially our children, get through these things or even prevent these things before they ever occur. So I've, I've studied all over the world. I've studied with Cherokee Indian herbalists, Amish herbalists. I've studied in universities. I studied um, in, in Europe at the natural healing clinics there and in Mexico. I've spoken in many, many countries about the importance of life and health. And it is my pleasure to be here with you to share some of these life um, sustaining principles. Thank you so much, Dr. Ellen. Uh, Vanessa, I may proceed. My name is Vanessa Chamberlain and a little bit about me and the work that I do um, over the last 30 years what I have been uh, primarily interested in is addressing the social toxicity that we're finding culturally um, and all of the different roots of social toxicity from a holistic perspective. We've seen over the last 30 years a rise in the lack of mind, body, spirit, wellness, and there are uh, numerous programs that address these issues from a symptoms-based perspective. So the work that I have been doing is based on cultural, understood as societal wellness, that we really need to look at how we have changed, especially in the 21st century, and understand that our children are often the loudest and the strongest in reflecting our lack of wellness, and that they are terrific spiritual messengers if we'll listen to underneath their behaviors and really listen to the needs that may not be met um, from a more macro view of, of understanding what is happening. And so I, I met Dr. Ellen many, many years ago after reading her book, um, Health is Your Birthright. And that was very congruent with my own values because she definitely has a holistic perspective for addressing our mind, body, spirit, wellness. So I contacted her on a personal note, um, loving her work and wanted to come together and collaborate on this particular event that we're hosting together. Um, this particular event about helping our youth and our young adults, so our children and our young adults, through the laws of nature, really getting back to the understanding that we have everything that we need to heal ourselves and to be well and to thrive if we really listen within. Um, our inherent wisdom is there. And so the work that I do with parents and educators and others throughout my community here in Arizona is to remind ourselves that we have this if we are quiet enough to look within for the answers. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, my next question will be community call to action for childhood wellness project. Uh, Vanessa, would you please tell me what are the main purposes of what is the main purpose of this project the main purpose of the project is to bring forward the adults of of this community and other communities that i would work within to 
um, bring forth, to call forth the truth of who we are. And the truth of who we are really as, as childhood advocates wanting for these generations to flourish is to remember our role as guardians of childhood, that there truly is a delineation between childhood and adulthood. And that that delineation is really important for today's children, that we rise as adults to help them from a, again, a holistic perspective, recognizing that once we reclaim our role, um, that our children will reflect our own wellness as we continue to get well ourselves. So there are myriad roots happening right now um, that are uh, that are best understood um, by really uncovering what each of what each of those roots is and how they have contributed to our social toxicity. Um, I will be talking about that a little bit more in your next question. But Thanks. the point of this call to action is really for the adults to come and and get the supports that they need to remember what their role is in the lives of our children and young adults and to um, to nurture themselves so that they can show up the ways that they want to, the ways that I'm hearing frequently that adults want to in the lives of the children for whom they care. That's amazing. Uh, when did you start this and how is it going? So um, many of the many of the programs that I have done have been under the umbrella of the Childhood Wellness Project. I started my business, the Cultural Wellness and Family Enrichment Center in 2004. And um, the Childhood Wellness Project was started around 2011. And through that, I have um, through that through that project, there's been many programs or other kinds of campaigns that have happened in our community here. Let's Get Wild Arizona was one of them where we remember the wild of childhood, the wonder, innocence, laughter, and daringness that is so important for our children to heal and to thrive. So um, many, many years I have been at this and right now in working with Dr. Ellen, this is one more program that we're offering. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, my next question is um, if you could uh, elaborate on restoring child plus young adult wellness uh, through the laws of nature. The reason that I believe that Dr. Ellen and I work so well together in our collaboration is, is that she, as she just described, has spent her life's work in the strategies, the holistic strategies that help us to remember that if we look to nature, nature will heal us. And nature is comprised, of course, of time in nature, um, the elements, uh, food, water, rest, exercise, all of, all of the things that we intuitively and inherently know and often become drowned out in a very fast 21st century lifestyle. So the laws of nature um, as, as Dr. Ellen will also elaborate, really are these essential well-being needs. And we can even look to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the bottom rung being survival. And while Maslow didn't necessarily describe at the time that he designed his hierarchy, that that would include the things that now uh, educators and professionals are referring to in that survival. What we know through the research is that much of our survival needs for healthy food, for um, being, being properly um, nourished by our foods. So healthy food, exposure to, sun, to sunshine, healthy play for both adults and children, time spent in nature, ample time for rest and, and restoration in, in multitudes, a multitude of ways that often are overlooked or misunderstood or um, forgotten in 21st century living, just really our most basic needs and how those then help us provide the foundation for the safety and security that we're seeking. That when our essential well-being needs at that bottom rung are not met, it is very difficult to advance to a feeling of security. And one of, one of the greatest issues for today's children is that they often know what they need to heal intuitively. They, they recognize their need for play and they often let us know through negative behaviors, through temper tantrums, through 
all sorts of the behaviors that we're seeing and the symptoms that we're seeing in our children and young adults today, that their essential well-being needs for movement and play are not being met. But play is nature's therapy. It's what they are designed to do. They live in their limbs from zero to 12 years of age. And so naturally, they know how to work through their stress and oftentimes are thwarted from being from having the freedom to go and take care of the emotional things that might be happening inside of themselves. When I do workshops with parents and educators, um, even as young as in their 30s, they recall a time and space that um, was slower, where they played out of doors for the majority of the day. Today's children play primarily um, on technology indoors more than 90% of the time. Very, very different than what, what we were seeing 50 and even 30 years ago with the amount of time spent out of doors in unstructured, non-adult led play. And we learn a lot about what children are doing during that play. What they're essentially doing is they're experiencing the freedom and the fortification to handle stress. So it isn't as though in the 21st century, all of a sudden we have a whole lot more trauma or loss because we've had trauma and loss forever. If we look past through our history, we've had these difficult things. The primary difference for today's children is and young adults is that they do not have the time and the space to process what is happening for them. So they're not climbing trees, spending time, doing what they need to do out of doors in unstructured play. They are very um, scheduled. There's regimented times for them to do things. They are hurried and rushed. And that is a primary complaint among today's parents. I, I do wow. want to also state that, that this is not to vilify us as adults that we have we need to go into shame and blame of ourselves. These changes that have occurred have been very insidious throughout our cultures, um, the way that we live as societies. And so it is adults first and foremost that need the nurturing and to remember what helps them to feel well so that their children can have the, the sacred time and space known as childhood and young adulthood to process, process their stress so that they are fortified to handle adult stress. How are the four Ds, uh, distraction, uh, disorientation, disengagement, and depression affecting our children and young adults um, nowadays? So I came up with the four Ds to describe the progression toward what we are seeing as a disconnection crisis. And the disconnection crisis mm -hmm. is not relegated to our children nor is it relegated to our young adults. We are seeing this as well as, as adults. However, as I just mentioned, um, our children are less and our young adults are less fortified to handle the stressors of the 21st century. So the progression of the four Ds, there's a lot going on in our society that distracts us. We have, of course, the amount of technology, media exposure, the amount of messages that come through. So we are consistently distracted and we see that in our youth. And the research shows that as life has sped up and, and human, the human race has become more and more distracted from doing one thing at a time and going through a process rather than just trying to get to a product at the end result, as things have sped up, we have seen more diagnosing of, of, of course, as I'm sure you've heard things such as ADHD diagnosing, low frustration tolerance, et cetera. So, um, so where we see distraction first begin is in early childhood when children are looking, for example, at their shoe or a flower for five minutes and we're saying, no, hurry up, we gotta go, we gotta get in the car. And so, we see that children are consistently distracted. They're also very distracted from processing their own feelings. We try to work through oftentimes things in a very quick manner. So our children have a lot coming at them and not enough time for processing what is coming at them. They then become disoriented and disorientation is really comprised of no longer listening within to our own needs because we have not had validation for our internal internal, um, as, as Louise Hay called it, our internal ding, 
our reminder that wait things this is not I, this is not what i should be doing this isn't going well my needs aren't being met i need to slow things down we start to drown out our spiritual selves and become disoriented in time and space to what our own needs are or what we should do next etc oftentimes we hear children saying i truly don't know or they're forgetting a lot and this is part of that that they they really have so much overload with stimuli that they can't listen anymore and remember things. So we, we see that happen for the adult population to a large degree as well. And then when we get into, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, you can finish. When we get into disengagement, the overload and the feeling disoriented and not being able to tune into our inherent self we then often see that children become very disengaged. So they're disengaged in school, they might be disengaged in home life. Um, and we see also, this is definitely not to vilify technology, but what the research is showing us is that the more children are engaged in virtual realities, be it video games, the iPad, the phones, that world becomes very narrow and they disengage from living connections to self, to others and to the natural world. And so then we see a whole host of other diagnoses as a result of the disengagement that our children are experiencing. And then oftentimes we have diagnosing of depression, but a real misunderstanding about what depression is. And the, the better understanding in, in my opinion, of course, is to really recognize that the life force has actually been depressed that the, the, the spiritual callings within, the emotional desires, the physical desires have been thwarted and padded down through a, a, a non-listening to, to essential well-being needs. Once again, largely because those needs are not validated in 21st century living. And so we see a depression of the life force where youth are often questioning, what's wrong with me? Why do I feel this way? Uh, adults are questioning that. Young adults especially saying, I don't know why I'm so depressed. It's hard to put a name on what exactly it is. But it's really a loss of feeling connected to source. And when we look at disconnection and the, the um, various definitions for disconnection, there is it throughout all of them, the, the root of feeling disconnected from your source. So I believe that we are in a crisis of meaning, that we have children that are not understanding what they're even here for, what this world is all about, because they are not connected to it in a living Amazing. sense. Thank you for your uh, explanation. Uh, we'll move to uh, Dr. Ellen, but uh, I'll come back to you, Vanessa. I might have a few questions or last question. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ellen, um, as we adults practice self-compassion, uh, self-nurturance, uh, and self-love, we tune into our inherent wisdom, as uh, Vanessa said, claim our power, uh, inspire change, etc. Does this apply to everyone, regardless of uh, their culture or geographic location? Absolutely, Bizrod. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And it, it doesn't matter what nationality, what race, what gender, what religion, we are all humankind. And we, are, we have forgotten that we're actually made from the elements of the earth. And within us is a source call it God, call it higher power, call it whatever it is, but we have gotten away from that source. And that source shows up within us either as joy, sadness, or pain. And that's our guidance system that we need to learn to tune into. And as adults, we need to learn to get still, to be in nature, to meditate the earth is really our mother the, we are made literally of the dust of the earth the elements of the earth 
And the more we realize that, the more we can claim our birthright of health back. Because if we don't get the 90 essential elements from the earth daily in our food, whole, pure, and natural, we'll be out of balance both mentally, emotionally, and physically. And if we don't have a faith in that higher power mm -hmm. and take the time to nurture that higher power, we will lose it. And we really are all one being. All of us in the earth are one. And we need to work together and realize that as one, we can heal each other through love and tuning in. We can heal each other. But if we, if we continue to be divided and fight and have wars and even go down and eat a lot of fast food or abuse ourselves individually, mm -hmm. I was sitting in a tent with some Native Americans once and they were praying and passing the peace pipe and it was during one of the wars that we had in the early 90s and a young brave came up and asked the chief what is I what can I do for this war to make things better in this world mm -hmm. and the chief looked at him and said have you helped your mother today mm -hmm. have you lent a hand to your brother and that's where we start with our children. Thank you so much. Uh, what are the foundational principles needed to live a healthy, happy life based on the laws of nature? Well, I loved what Vanessa said about children playing outside. I grew up on a farm and we had old oak trees that I swang in swings Hi. from. My feet were on the earth. Mm -hmm. We had gardens, we had flowers, you know, we, we knew the, the earthly element. Mm -hmm. Even feeling the connection with, as a child would, fairies and elves, and imagination and mm -hmm. cre creativity that only comes from that connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when children are always on the internet, They've lost that inner connection or a reason to be here and to be alive. Without any faith, how can we have happiness and joy? How can we know if anything good is ever going to happen to us? We need to take our power back. We need to take responsibility and make choices <laughs> for whole, healthy, natural foods. So to be able to heal ourselves, I wrote the book, Health is Your Birthright, because I truly believe health is our birthright. I believe we have gotten so far away from the laws of our source and nature that we have lost how to be well. And we have hooked up to a pharmaceutical company. All the pharmaceutical companies have their place but they are being abused and over abused mm -hmm. to the point where we feel we cannot heal ourselves with nutrients, herbs, even flowers are our medicine. And we're having side effects, rampant side effects mm -hmm. to all these pharmaceuticals. And I have clients that come to me on a long list of medications and another long list to counteract the first long list. And so what's the matter with this picture? We haven't gotten back to understand that our thyroid may need seaweed with iodine. You know, our pancreas may need healthy small foods throughout the day and to avoid refined white sugar which is one of the greatest poisons on our planet. You know, when I was down in Costa Rica, I was eating sugarcane out of the field. And that sugarcane, designed by our Creator, has all the nutrients and fiber in it 
to help us process that sugar. And it's healthy. But when you start eating loads, such as in sodas, 12 teaspoons of sugar a day, that sugar feeds back bacteria, fungus, and viruses in the body. So we as adults first need to learn which nutrients are good for each mm -hmm. of the body systems. And I'm going to be teaching this on our cultural wellness time that we have together in November. And we need to learn how to take care of ourselves as naturally as we can. We need to learn the foods for each body system because our divine creator designed us mm -hmm. with organs, glands, and systems that need foods that come from our earth. And those foods can be very, very healing for every part of the body. Even our gut needs magnesium to have peristalsis and function. Well, what foods do we get that magnesium from? We get it from the squashes. We get it from all the yellow foods. And when we think about our heart, our heart needs certain nutrients. And you can prevent a heart attack sometimes with cayenne to improve circulation. So if we know all of these things, there are special herbs that help our immune system, such as echinacea. And when we learn all of these things and take care of ourselves, first with loving ourselves and meditating and connecting with our own source and making our homes and our yards and our environment as close to source and nature as we can for a wonderful harmonious place for children to grow up <laughs> and i work with many young couples that want to get pregnant and i will tell you that a healthy child starts with the parent six months or a year or years before they conceive because our bodies ourselves are soil we are a terrain, ecological terrain, that needs to be in balance nutritionally, emotionally, and spiritually. And then we have the right to host a soul to come into a little baby's body. Mm. And then we have the wow. honor and the privilege <laughs> To bring, to bring these children to our earth. And then we need to learn how to birth them naturally, how to love them and play with them and allow them space to be in nature, to be creative, to paint, to color, to draw, to get their feet on the earth, to realize who they are and that they have the power to heal themselves with nutrition and herbs and all of the things that are in our divine medicine cabinet. And there is so much that we can learn and do if, if we learn, if we stop and start taking care of ourselves and loving ourselves. Pure water, clean air, using organic foods, that in itself is a big, big step in our wellness. So I just feel like if we as adults take responsibility, body, mind, and spirit, for our nutrition, how we take care of ourselves, and how we love and are stewards to our precious, precious children, we'll have healthier, happier, children to go forward and be our adults one day. Uh, what are the the main challenges of our precious children dealing with in our world today and how to uh, conceive, uh, nurture and grow our children into healthy, responsible adults? I think the main challenges of children that are born to families 
that are both parents working and never spending time with them and giving them a computer or an iPad or a cell phone to live on constantly and are being fed fast food and food and never learning uh, love. I mean, spending time with your child, letting them read to you, um, and really and truly not just filling them full of antibiotics all the time and all these vaccinations that they give children today. Um, I'm not saying never use them, but I'm saying that there are so many natural ways that you can shepherd your children and work on natural things that will heal your children. There are many natural antibiotics so that they won't have the side effects. I had a, a couple come to me all the way from Arizona once and their little boy had a very swollen belly. He had had a high fever as a child and was given antibiotics over and over and over again. And we know that antibiotics can save a life. But when you have them all the time, they destroy the forgotten soldiers in our gut, which are our, a huge part of our immune system. And that little boy had been destroyed almost completely. He could not have a bowel movement. He had not had one in two weeks. And he was living on laxatives that were not working. He was getting pneumonia all the time because his immune system was gone. They really felt they were going to lose him because the doctors did not, not know what else to do. And I'm giving this as one example of hundreds of children I've worked with. And so I worked with that mother and father for an entire year to help that child get well from pneumonia, sore throat, and infection without antibiotics. You see, every time you take an antibiotic, the problem comes back again and again because it kills all your friendly bacteria, your immune system. So then it won't work anymore. So then you just get another antibiotic. It's a vicious cycle. So I feel like that um, children need to learn that we can, first of all, prevent illness with good food, good water, good play, avoiding toxic foods, um, chemicals, and sugar and all the things that kids are given. So I would like parents to think, to take responsibility. It's not impossible to change your life. It's not impossible to prepare foods at home and to choose organic foods so our children get the nutrients they need. And I even have uh, this little boy that I was working with I taught his mother how to prepare food, how to massage his belly, how to give him chlorella, which is a single uh, cell water plant in, in little tablet form that really helps the bowels to move, how to give him probiotics, how to massage his spine, how to help him get well naturally and we used echinacea to improve the strength of his lungs and deep breathing. It is not impossible to change your lives if your parents to, uh, I even have parents read or speak their love to their children and say many positive things on a tape and play it to them before they go to sleep at night. And to make the space for your child to be able to play outside, to play in the dirt, to have dolls that they make out of sticks like I did when I was a child, to be creative, to be imaginative, to be able to help prepare healthy cookies or, or learn to choose an organic cantaloupe at the store. You know, we need gardens for children. We need gardens in schools. We need to teach them that 
our source is this earth and that we're not going to survive if we don't take care of the air, the water, the soil, eat the nutrients from the soil. Our topsoil is being destroyed on our planet for for financial purposes, but it's all going to crash if we don't change and stop spraying so many chemicals on the crops that go directly into our livers. We're being weakened daily by the way we eat, drink, think, live, and love. And those are the things, those are the tenets that we need to learn to look at and begin making a healthy home and atmosphere for our children. I, well, I really well, this, uh, I'd like to say that I've had four spinal surgeries because oh I had God. scoliosis as a child and a 16-inch rod placed in my spine. The rod broke in my 20s. I nearly lost my life. And I have spent my oh. life searching how to sit here in front of you today. There were times when I lay looking at the ceiling, not knowing if I'd ever be able to be a human again. And I was determined wow. that I would practice these principles and, and rebuild and repair and put new tissue in place of old with nutrients. And I am free from pain to this day. And I can, tr I have traveled, I have lectured, I have been in many, many countries in this world, connecting with parents and children and teaching them these healthy principles. And I always felt that if I could do it for myself, then I could really know inherently mm -hmm. that it could be done by others. Thank you so much, Dr. Ellen. I really appreciate your educational um, recommendations today. Uh, we'll move to Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa, when and where is this uh, November event taking place? This will be a webinar. Dr. Ellen and I will be speaking um, so virtually. However, that is just the beginning. It is really to provide throughout the world um, the opportunity for folks to attend from all over. And then in the new year, 2023, we will be, um, we will be in person live for a deeper dive into our three hour overview that is happening on November the 19th, virtually. The registration for that begins on October the 10th. Um, so people can visit the website, um, childhoodwellnessproject.org in order to register. And the, the time for the event is 10 to one mountain standard time and also Pacific time. Um, and yes. Yes. 10 to one mountain wouldn't be the same as Pacific, right? They are on the, sa the same time right now. Oh, they are. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it changed in November, I believe. Um, I think. Oh, no. you know. Yeah, the, the day, time savings change on uh, November, I believe, whether it's the first week or the second of November. Uh, final remark, uh, Vanessa, since you're uh, leading this project, uh, uh, would you give us a final remark? I, I love that Dr. Ellen just led us to my final remark. Thank you, Dr. Ellen. The final uh, remark, remembering the truth of who we are and whose we are, what we are made from, yes. the magnificent capacity that we have been given as an honor to live this life as adults and then the terrific honor and privilege of raising children. Whether we are parents or educators or childhood advocates or citizens that simply want to um, remember that we're all connected and that every single thing that we do behooves the next generation, simply as Dr. Ellen referred, uh, as, as she, not simply, let, let me not downplay the miraculous recovery that she made through her belief that her immune system and her body was, was, was made for her by the divine. And that when we continue to look within for the answers and to the capacity that we have to heal, we will find answers. 
and that our children in watching us remember who we are, our children are always a reflection of the greater culture. One of parents' greatest end educators, parents and educators' greatest fears is to do things differently against status quo for fear of parental peer pressure or educational peer pressure that happens as a result of any new thing. Martin Luther King going against the status quo at the time to say, this isn't right. We need to get back to loving each other. And while that is often seen as very simple, oh, we just need to love each other. There couldn't be anything that is more true, remembering how important it is to love ourselves so that we are mirroring to our children. This is what it means to love ourselves. And so oftentimes parents become afraid to make these changes because it is going against what we've seen now as the cultural norm here in the United States uh, and, and throughout the world in many places. Our children, I believe strongly, are hungry for us to remember that we do not need to focus on in an inner entertainment oriented childhood, that in thinking that somehow our children need to be entertained in front of screens to either learn about the world or to have fun is, is going against very much so what we've seen throughout history and that that is childhood and young adulthood is meant to be a process of discovery, discovery of yourself, how you connect with the natural world, how you connect with others, community, et cetera. And as we become more and more pro uh, product oriented, getting to the final product of something, sitting in front of a screen versus being a part of a process of discovery, we have become more disconnected. Our children also are more interested, as Dr. Ellen was saying, about one of, one of the most important things is to spend time with our children and many families not to again look at the 21st century as blaming when we have pricing that is is what it is right now the cost of living and and two parents working but recognizing instead how can we shift our uh lifestyles to match up and be congruent with the things we value if we want a healthy and happy family our children do not need a bunch of things it is not quality time, it is quantity time. And quality does fit in there, but we're often looking for the big hurrah, the big sensationalized Disneyland or the videos or whatever the latest and greatest is versus the very mundane of life that is chores, that is a sense of belonging in a home because there's purpose and there's meaning to setting the table and coming together for dinner and making a bed and doing all of these things that help children to truly feel secure, have a sense of belonging in themselves, a family and the greater world, because they have a purpose and are not sitting in front of a screen. Thank you so much, both of you, Dr. Ellen and Vanessa. Uh, thank you for coming to Tugrai Press Media and reflecting awesome. important uh, things uh, for our children and for uh, adults as well. That concludes our program today. I thank you very much, and I hope to see you again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our viewers, uh, thank you for staying with us. And please don't forget to share, subscribe, and like. Uh, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you.